Hello, and thank you for watching this regional forecast for the Corn Belt. I'm Andrew Pritchard, Senior Meteorologist with Nutrient Ag Solutions. Well, we finally brought some rainfall into portions of western and central Iowa that badly needed it, but it's no secret at this point uh, to you or anyone else waking up in the Midwest here that it came at the expense of a prolific wind damage producing storm system, what we call a derecho. Uh, that's a term that gets brought up only once or twice a year. Uh, we use it to describe particularly long lived, widespread and significant wind producing uh, storm systems. And so of course this one producing wind damage from Omaha across the entire state of Iowa, slamming the Des Moines, Iowa uh, area, Cedar Rapids, uh, with you know 100 to 120 mile per hour wind gusts that were measured there creating catastrophic damage uh, that complex then passed through the quad cities into northern and central portions of illinois through the chicago metro into northern and central indiana where there was even a couple of tornado reports before dying out in eastern uh, in western i'm sorry portions of ohio so five to six hundred miles this thing traveled originating in central south dakota early on monday morning late sunday night monday morning here it is traveling now into the omaha area now we produce wind damage across iowa into northern illinois sweeping into indiana now as the sun goes down dying out as we push into uh, uh, ohio uh, in the overnight i'll let it play one more time here just absolutely incredible very hot and humid unstable air mass here so this thing was able to sustain itself even though there was relatively weak wind shear this was on uh, essentially nobody's radar yesterday. We had a marginal risk uh, for severe storms in this area, a slight risk off to the south. Eric showed our, our Nutrien uh, Experimental Thunderstorm Environment Index, and it did a fantastic job uh, plotting out the volatile environment here. But of course, you need a thunderstorm complex there uh, to tap into that environment. So there was still some uncertainty there as just how bad this would be. But by mid-morning, it became clear we were looking at a, a serious situation across parts of Iowa, Illinois, and Indiana. Uh, I stumbled upon some pretty bad damage as I was covering the storms near Dwight, Illinois. This is on Highway 47 in northeastern Illinois, and these folks who were incredibly kind and optimistic for the shape that their farm was in happened to be uh, fellow Nutrient Ag Solutions growers there. Uh, so I'm showing a distant shot here. I don't want to impose on their privacy too much here, uh, but just absolutely uh, incredible damage here produced across parts of Iowa and Illinois. And I just, my heart goes out to you all. Um, you know, just after such a rough year, we finally get some rainfall here and, and it comes at the expense of something like that. So um, I'm thinking of you all. Uh, if you want to see more information on this, I have a lot more in the way of video damage uh, and meteorological information about that on my social media page here. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at at Skydrama. Uh, additionally, if you've got information you'd like to share, photographs and update on your crops there, whether you know, you've know you sustained serious damage or maybe you lucked out there, shoot me an email at andrew.pritchard at nutrien.com. I really crave that community feedback there. So you know, let me know what you experienced uh, if you experienced these storms yesterday. So let's go ahead and jump in. Let's look at things now. We've got cooler air coming in on the backside of that front now, 50s and 60s spilling into parts of Wisconsin and Iowa. That less humid, slightly cooler air will spill into the eastern Corn Belt here as we head through the rest of the day today. Look at the satellite picture here early on Tuesday morning. Uh, the storm system from yesterday has finally died out. We've got a cluster of storms back here across South Dakota this morning uh, and additional thunderstorms popping up across the southern plains into the southeast. We can see those when we look at the radar. Again, a little complex of strong storms storms here in central portions of South Dakota. We've got an MCV here across parts of Oklahoma, a mesoscale convective vortex, a little compact area of low pressure induced by uh, thunderstorms the day before. And then we've got some storms here across southern portions of Missouri early this morning. Now, as cooler, drier air spills into the eastern Corn Belt, we're going to shut down thunderstorm activity there as we head into the middle and later part of the week. So we look at the next three days of severe weather outlooks from the Storm Prediction Center uh, with instability and moisture still being funneled up into the central and northern plains and then good flow in the jet stream, which we'll look at here across the Dakotas. Uh, that's where the, the highest severe weather risk is going to be found here as we head through the next several days. Looking at the uh, the National Weather Service forecast for seven day precipitation over the next week, and again, we still look to be uh, looking at the potential for some uh, rain here across parts of Iowa that badly needed. Of course, if you've still got a crop here uh, that needs some rain and it's still standing up, we'll hope to do this without severe weather. But of course, that's just not a promise that we can make here in the summer. Much of our rainfall comes from these uh, big complexes of storms. But yesterday was an absolutely uh, um, 
uh, unique experience there. A, a rare one, I guess, would be a better word there. So not likely looking at any more uh, storm systems producing 120 mile per hour wind gusts across the region, hopefully. But a, a good shot at some rain here from the Dakotas down through Minnesota into parts of Iowa. Drier, of course, across the eastern Corn Belt in the mid-Mississippi Valley. We'll take a look at the European mo uh, models here. Uh, the plot for 500 millibar wind speeds. Again, we've got our ridge here across the southwest. Here's where the flow is. Again, tra traveling around a trough here across the Canadian prairie, uh, an upper level trough here across portions of Alberta and Saskatchewan. And so the good strong flow, good support in the jet stream found across the Dakotas where we're still funneling some moisture northward. We'll look at that here. Uh, looking at the precipitable water content, just a loop through the next five days, taking it through the end of the work week. You see as this loop restarts, uh, the drier air here being kind of filtered into the, the Great Lakes, parts of the Eastern Corn Belt. That's what's gonna keep thunderstorm activity shut down uh, as we head through the middle and late part of the week. And then again, uh, moisture being funneled northward uh, still across the high plains and with that strong jet stream support across the region, that's why thunderstorm activity will be most numerous across the Northern Plains and parts of Minnesota and Iowa as we head through the end of the week. So we'll look at the uh, the high resolution NAM model. Of course, understanding that this model is not just pure gospel. This is a, a computer model's uh, a simulation of what it expects is going to happen. This model did extremely poorly with Monday's severe system. But as we hit play on this, you can see the areas that we're watching. Let me go ahead and jump back. Just watching for repeated clusters of thunderstorms to develop across the Dakotas, pushing into parts of Minnesota and Wisconsin as we head through the middle of the week, and then watching for the potential for slow-moving thunderstorm complexes here across the Southern Plains into the Ozarks and parts of the Ohio River Valley and the Mid-South. So total precipitation, again, this is not gospel, this is not fact, but you can see the corridors here across the Dakotas, parts of Minnesota into Iowa over the next several days. This is through 1 p.m. on Thursday, and then the potential for slow-moving, heavy rain-producing thunderstorms across the Ozarks and the Mid-South. So we'll look at the European uh, forecast here as we head through the end of the week, taking it a little bit uh, broader. Uh, let's go ahead and head through the day today. Again, watching our two regions here, watching for thunderstorms across the high plains and then again across the Ozarks as we head through the afternoon and evening hours today. We'll take it into Wednesday, watching for a repeat of the same thing. Storms forming across the Dakotas and Minnesota, parts of Nebraska and Kansas across the high plains. Additional storms here across the Mid-South, the lower Mississippi R River Valley. And then we're now into Thursday, getting it a Thursday night. Now taking it into Friday. This would be a, you know Thursday into Friday when we're looking at maybe the potential for some heavy rain across parts of Iowa associated with some more organized thunderstorm complexes. And then as we go ahead, we'll smooth it out here and look at the ensemble forecast as we head a little bit further into the weekend because it's got low confidence as we get beyond the four to seven day time frame. So uh, just showing you the general trend as we head through the next couple of days. Again, much of the thunderstorm activity across the Dakotas, Minnesota, Iowa, uh, parts of uh, Nebraska and Kansas at times. That's our main corridor here as we head through the next three to four days. And then again, across the southeast, parts of the Mid-South and the lower Mississippi Valley. Meanwhile, the Great Lakes, the Eastern Corn Belt, relatively dry as we head through the end of the week. Now, where we get some changes is as we get into the end of the week, Friday, uh, late Friday, getting into Saturday and Sunday. Uh, it looks like we'll start to bring a front through the region. That's when we could start to bring some of this thunderstorm activity, at least for a day or two, back into parts of Illinois and Indiana, uh, parts of Missouri here, uh, and the rest of the Eastern Corn Belt as we get into probably Saturday and Sunday. There you see the front kind of sweeping through there. Again, this is uh, the ensemble model, so we're looking at a very um, smoothed out uh, and kind of broad forecast picture here. but. We'll look at the probability now of a half an inch of precipitation or more between now and Friday evening from the European Ensemble model. You see the corridor there. You're looking for the orange and the red shading where you get better than a 70% chance here. And again, it's across the eastern Dakotas, Minnesota, into maybe northern and western Iowa, parts of eastern Nebraska. And then again, you get a gap there and a little bit uh, of more heavy rainfall chances here across southern Missouri, Arkansas, off into the mid-south. The eastern Corn Belt, uh, central Illinois, Wisconsin, uh, getting into northern Indiana, Ohio, looking to be on the dry side. And as we take this all the way out to the next week, so looking into uh, early next week through Tuesday evening, 
Again, you start to fill in the Eastern Corn Belt there, but uh, I really think this is going to be a one or two day opportunity as the front pushes through the region. I think that as we're talking about parts of Illinois and Indiana uh, and maybe Eastern Missouri, we're probably not talking about multiple days of repeated rounds of storms here as we get into the weekend, probably looking at maybe a, a one stop shop here, uh, a, a one, one shot, I guess, <laughs> at getting some precipitation as the front sweeps through. Uh, the good news is we don't desperately need any heavy rain here across parts of the eastern Corn Belt. We could use some as you head off to the east into parts of Ohio, but with some of the rain over the last week, not quite such a dire situation as it was across parts of Iowa. Temperatures will be nearly steady as we head into the early part of next week before that front sweeps in, uh, bringing a change here, bringing in cooler air to the central part of the country. So we'll bring it back to uh, this week. Again, cooler air sinking into the Corn Belt on the backside of yesterday's severe weather producing storm system while heat continues to build across the central plains underneath that ridge. Heat begins to uh, shift back into the central and eastern Corn Belt as we head into the weekend, but then Saturday and Sunday that front sweeps through leading to another big cool down across the midsection of the country. So the next five Five days of temperatures warm in the west, a little bit cooler in the central uh, part of the country here into the central and eastern part of the Corn Belt, but really just maybe a degree or two cooler than average. Uh, lower humidity will make it feel pretty good across parts of Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, up into Michigan. Here's our highs on Thursday, Friday, and then Saturday with cooler air starting to filter in across parts of the northern plains. Have a great day. We'll talk to you again on Friday.